So first off, before we jump into any of the specifics about the framework, how to access it, and some of the different uh, concepts involved, uh, we want to talk a little bit about what's new in version 6. If any of you have used Foundation in the past, versions uh, 2 through 6 are, of course, responsive. Uh, it's kind of how most people find and gravitate towards the Foundation framework. In this version, we've done quite a bit to truncate the size of the CSS and JS. Mainly the CSS has been cut in half. Uh, so it's 50% lighter than it was before, which is uh, a pretty important thing if you are worried about, uh, you know, download speeds, having a lighter code base, and basically having a lot less crust uh, in your site. Uh, accessibility is also a big push for this version of Foundation. All components have accessibility hooks built in. Uh, they are ally friendly, A11Y friendly. Uh, you guys go ahead and look A11Y up on the old interwebs if you're interested in learning more about compatibility and accessibility. Uh, you can use the ARIA hooks built in uh, for all of our components to make sure that you can use things like keyboard uh, shortcuts for the folks out there who aren't able to see uh, or aren't able to use a mouse. Um, there are things in there that allow you to easily read the content and other great things in there for accessibility reasons. Uh, so, so it's going to be especially big if you're in areas like the EU and I've even heard Israel now and other places where it's actually in some cases mandated that you actually have those accessibility things in there. And of course, that's a good thing for everyone. Uh, we've also got some new nav patterns, mostly around the, the new menu patterns. You guys might remember if you've used Foundation before, uh, our very popular top bar pattern, uh, who I know from several anecdotes is very popular with sysadmins who like just plopping in that top bar. Well, we've got a whole new set of menu patterns that you can combine to make something like tap, top bar or something completely different, uh, which is really neat. Uh, not going to cover it in this session, but we've got more flexible SAS. So in this session, this first hour, we're going to be covering mostly the basics, but in the next uh, sessions coming up, we'll be talking about uh, some of the SAS things we've got there. It makes it easier to change breakpoints, for example. And of course, we've got JavaScript utilities, an expanded library of JavaScript utility functions. Cool. So first off, the basics, downloading foundation. Where do you do it? How do you do it? Well, if you go to www.foundation.zerb.com, uh, so actually get rid of the www. Uh, you should be able to, and I'm going to go ahead and do this for you on the interwebs because I just prefer to do it live. So you can see the URL. Go to foundation.zerb.com, click the download foundation six, and you'll be confronted with a couple options there on the screen. You've got the complete. You've got the essential, you've got the custom, and you've got the SAS. Uh, for our work in Zurb Studios, uh, which I spend most of my time, uh, we use, of course, the SAS version. Uh, any of these versions will do. They're all great. Uh, you could even get away with just the essentials, uh, which we'll talk about in a moment here. Or you can use this handy dandy customizer to customize uh, your download a foundation to whatever you need. Uh, so that means you'll be able to add or remove different features as needed. Um, if you are really looking for just a bare stripped down version, I do recommend the essential uh, because that way you only have the grid, the buttons, reveal, and interchange. And that's about 59 kilobytes plus dependencies. Let me switch back over to the keynote. Cool. So as we mentioned, the default CSS, definitely the simplest way to get started. It includes all of the foundation components and dependencies. So it's kind of the kitchen sink uh, without the SAS version. Uh, this also includes a sample index.html with some demo components in it. So this is really handy, especially if you're just getting started. Uh, I don't know about you, but I, when I started using foundation, probably back in two or three, versions two or three, uh, that sample index.html really painted a picture for me. Uh, I'm more of a visual person coming from a design background and being able to see all that code already there kind of in that index.html page really helped me get started learning how to use uh, the foundation framework. So when you actually download the package, uh, as we just showed you, uh, you'll be able to open up your index.html in a browser and it'll look something like this. Uh, so the first top up here is kind of demonstrating some of the different uh, ways that you can arrange your columns in a grid. It goes over some of the different uh, basic components like buttons and things like that. Uh, if you're actually trying to just get started on a mini project right now, 
feel free to go ahead and delete everything in the entire body of that file, but you're gonna to wanna to keep the head and the CSS for the JS. So again, essential CSS, it's a little bit different than the default. We talked about it a little bit a second ago. It is a stripped down version of foundation that only includes typography, the grid, buttons, modals, and interchange. And again, it's really great if you're building a simple site, you know you're gonna be custom writing a lot of components, go ahead and do that. Um, also, if you're using the SAS version with uh, uh, something that we're not gonna talk about in this first hour, but I'll mention it so you can ask questions to whoever is showing it later. Uh, you'll definitely want to probably look in the future if you're serious about foundation, if you're interested in SaaS and you want to get started with build systems, using the Foundation for Sites template, uh, even though you're using the full-on SaaS version that has everything, um, you can make it just as light as the essential CSS in your production code using Foundation's advanced build process. And that's a subject for a later uh, a later uh, session here, but I just wanted to plant that seed in your head because that is some really cool stuff. Not to say that the essential CSS isn't. This is a great thing if you're starting a mini project, uh, but just something to be aware of. So as I was talking about the SaaS version, this is for advanced users who want total control of the framework. Uh, this does allow you to edit colors, sizing, styles, et cetera, of every foundation component. Now you might be reading that or hearing that and saying, wait, I can do that anyways in CSS, right? I can just override the styles and make sure it cascades below whatever style was there before. Uh, that's true. Uh, but with the SAS version, it comes with a, a settings file that allows you to directly modify uh, the SAS variables, which would then change that variable everywhere else. So the easiest example is colors. Uh, my color, my primary color when I download this is going to be that blue, that foundation blue. Uh, all I have to do is change that variable and everywhere that it uses that blue will now be whatever color I changed it to. So this does require some command line foo and knowledge of SAS to get going. But as I mentioned previously, with the foundation sites template, uh, that is something that is gonna make you feel like a ninja in no time short. And finally, on the uh, last bit here about uh, getting started and downloading, there is the custom downloader. So we did talk about that a little bit already, uh, just to kind of uh, highlight some of the key points and takeaways there. It does provide ease of use for the complete download. Uh, with some of the customiz customizability of the SAS version. So rather than uh, modifying or commenting out uh, different components in your app.scss uh, or modifying the settings file, uh, you can do this visually as we just looked at uh, on the browser and actually just select the checkboxes and things for the components you want, omit the ones you don't, uh, choose the kind of grid you want, how many columns, whether it's the flex grid, et cetera, uh, manage the different settings there and change the colors directly from there. So if you don't want to get your hands wet with a SAS version or the build template or any of that stuff, and you just want straight CSS and you want a visual way of being able to decide what you want, the customizer is great for that. I used to use it all the time when I first got started and was freelancing. This was how I started off every project. I started off with the customizer, trimmed it to what I need and got going. So let's talk about mobile first. This is a big one. If you've ever, uh, if you've been in the web development community for a while, uh, this might have been something when it reared its head some years back that kind of annoyed you. It might have annoyed you because you were probably used to thinking about web pages on desktop screens. In fact, if you're around long enough, you were probably thinking about things uh, around 960 pixels when that was the thing to do back in the day because that was the common screen dimension that we all decided to design for. And that was before foundation and, and responsive web design came along. Even after responsive web design came along, the concept of mobile first was introduced because when responsive web design first came out, it was designed to uh, solve a problem still on desktop screens. We didn't really have the kinds of smartphones in our pockets that we do today. Uh, now that we have so many smart devices, we've got tablets, we've got smartphones, we've got internet of things. Uh, it's become really important to think about the mobile stuff. And it's more important to think about mobile first from a design perspective because those things cascade much nicer upwards than they do downwards. And that's the way we've written the Foundation 6 framework uh, to make sure that those things uh, actually cascade up rather than down. So this takes the concept of responsibility.